This is Matthew, author, artist, and commentator. I run luminousbeings.blog, where you can find all my articles, stories, drawings, and podcasts. Welcome to King of Hearts, Queen of Sorrows, my platform for discussing one of my favorite shows of all time, Mobile Fighter G Gundam. I'm your host, Matthew Munoz. I'm an aspiring author and selective enjoyer of anime. This is episode 7. Today I'll be talking about G Gundam episode 7, but before I do that, I want to take a moment to reflect on what's happened so far in the show and kind of discuss where the, uh, the shift in direction is going. So yesterday I actually um, went through the episodes just kind of scanning them to see what the arcs are for the show. And uh, I don't know what I'm going to call this arc, but from basically Jigun 7 through 11 is its own arc. Um, and it's almost like a reaction to uh, the audience's revelation that Kyoji is the man in the photo and he's paired with the Dark Gundam. And it's like it's almost like this set of episodes is going to be about Rain and Domun struggling with that... Uh, I guess struggling with the the task that they've been given. Before they were on their mission and they didn't have really solid leads, so it was more about trying to find information. Um, but it's funny, now that the audience knows exactly what is going on, it almost seems like it shifted the way Domin and, and Rain are reacting to it. And it might be because of the experience they had reliving the day and, and all that up in Neo Japan. So I paused for a bit and I thought about it, and I think the perfect name for this is the acceptance arc, which might sound a little funny, but basically, I, calling back my memory of the episodes that I, you know, skimmed or you know, that I had watched before, uh, I think I can remember that there are characters, whether it's Doe Moon Rain or other characters, who have to kind of accept something from their past and figure out if they have the resolve to live a certain way. And that kind of seems to be what it's about, especially uh, episode seven really uh, kind of mirrors Domun and Kyoji. And uh, at first I thought Domun and Rain, but um, being that there's siblings involved, I think it definitely mirrors Domun Domun and Kyoji, and I'll try to talk about that uh, going forward. So first, uh, with that acceptance thing in mind, I wanted to kind of reorient what the show is going to be about for the next couple episodes. So this is kind of what I, I wrote this before, but uh, I, I still think it works in this context. So here we go. Rain Mikamura accompanies Domun Kashu as he fights to become the winner of the Gundam fight so he can free his father and capture his brother Kyoji Kashu, who escaped to Earth with the Dark Gundam. The Dark Gundam wields immeasurable power and could be used to take control of all space. For now, the Dark Gundam is hiding, likely to reemerge towards the end of the Gundam fight tournament. Now... Uh, basically what happens with this episode is uh, Gina Rodriguez is dying. Her brother Chico became New Mexico's Gundam fighter under false pretenses so they could live out her last days in peace in the home they had dreamed of since childhood, which is Mexico uh, and specifically near the oceans of Mexico because their grandfather told them about it when they were up on the uh, New Mexico colony. Um, anyway, uh, kind of a... A side note to get into is uh, the new Mexican officials trick Chibity into baiting a lethal trap for Chico, um, but he doesn't want to play ball when he uh, learns their true intentions. Uh, apparently Chico's killed a bunch of the uh, federal men uh, sent to get him to to fight, um, and he tried to kill Domun too, all to live in peace with his sister Gina. Um, so that's pretty interesting. I was tr- kind of struggling to think, like, why does it make sense for chico to stay in mexico with gina when they could just kind of flee and totally be fugitives but live together in peace and happiness and the thing is she's dying and he knows she's dying she knows she's dying she's only got about a year left and the gundam fight tournament is about a year so he had become champion specifically to get onto earth and spend the time there with her but he can't just tell them that uh if he tells his government that they'll say Hey, Bob, yeah, you're going to have to fight for us, which is why he's hidden um, Spike Gundam or Tequila Gundam in the original. And um, so that makes sense. He wants to stay there by the ocean with his sister because that's what they dreamed of since they were kids. And since she only has about a year left, that's what he's trying to make happen. And he's desperate to make it happen. And um, it makes a lot of sense. And I think the way that this parallels Kyoji and Domun is that basically 
uh, Kyoji and Domon um, have a fate tied together. Uh, Kyoji's with the Dark Gundam, and you know, at about a year, he will reemerge and wreak havoc on uh, on the Earth and cause all this damage. And there's kind of a ticking clock aspect to it. And Domun has chose or has been coerced, forced by his government to uh, you know, like free his father by going and uh, fighting against his brother. And um, that mirrors to me uh, Chico, who has decided to use his government as a means to uh, seeing that his sister is happy and able to spend her last days uh, in freedom. And uh, I don't know if you see it, but to me, I, I kind of get the connection there. Um, well, it, it's kind of a mirroring. So Chico is using the government. The government is using Domun. They're using Domun to stop uh, the rise of the Dark Gundam and Kyoji from causing stuff. And uh, Chico's using his government um, to benefit his sister, who is innocent and whose you know fate is death, uh, basically, which really stinks for them. Um, and I just think that's really interesting because uh, Chico, like kind of wants to run away from things and he uh, is you know he's killing these innocent people basically I mean they might be bad uh, like bad soldiers who are willing to kill innocent people and he's killing them so how bad is it you know it's still taking of a human life so that's not good obviously um, but he's willing to kill these people who are sent after him and his sister to you know keep him in the Gundam fight because he wants to be free and Domun accuses Chico of running away a bunch of times and like even Rain at the end when he goes to fight in his in his Gundam Rain says he's running away again or something to that effect um and I think the reason Rain says that is because she's not running either uh she's with Domun in his fight against um against the Dark Gundam and against uh Kyoji and she has sacrificed things, which we'll see in a couple episodes, in order to do this. Um, but she's willing to because she believes it's right. And she's a little bit in a different situation because she's, while she's connected, she doesn't have the personal stake of, like, potentially losing somebody who she loves um, by helping Domun in his mission against the Dark Gundam and the Dark Gundam uh, is going to cause harm to many, many people. So, uh, I mean, if, even if you want to take the tack that she's a doctor, you know, she's uh, doing no harm by <laughs> by uh, fighting alongside Domun um, to stop the Dark Gundam. So, I don't know. It's very, it's very interesting uh, what exactly is going on here. And I'm not sure... Um, well, and I, I do think it parallels them. Um, and the... To me, the most interesting thing is Domin at one point says about Gina that he's that she's not his concern when uh, Rain is kind of protesting that he's going to go fight with Chico. And he's like, yeah, she's not my problem. I'm not going to deal with her. And uh, Domin says something else that uh, kind of makes him sound like a jerk, but ultimately in the end he does something really noble and good. And I think he sees the parallel between himself and Kyoji and Gina and... Uh, and uh, Gosh, Chico, and that's why he does it. Um, let's see. Oh, he, uh, Chico, like, as he's being defeated, he's telling Domun, like, please take care of Gina for me. And uh, Domun says, no, you go live with Gina yourself, and you take care of her and protect her. Um, like, and you have to face your problems yourself. Uh, well, I guess that one doesn't really apply, but definitely the thing about, like, no, you go take care of her. And then he purposely demolishes uh, Spike Gundam in order to make it look like he killed Chico. And uh, Chibity even uh, kind of freaks out with Domun. He's like, hey, man, I've lost all respect for you. I can't believe you would do that. That's so low. You were obviously going to win. And Domun, I guess, like over a private comm channel or whatever, um, assures Chibity, like, I didn't kill him. I helped him out. I, you know, I freed him from this. And uh, I thought that was pretty interesting. Um, I like kind of the nuance there that um, Chibity couldn't exactly tell what was going on. And the fact that he was mad, even though he was in his Gundam right there, uh, kind of sells it that the Mexican officials would be confounded, too, by what Domun did. Um, and even Rain, she, like, records the death, and she's like, hey, in, uh, she says something like, uh, in accordance with, you know, this, you know, rule, if a Gundam fighter dies, that's okay, basically. Um, you know, 
Chico's dead and Gina's crying and she's upset. So it really sells the story that he fought honorably for his country uh, when the time came. I mean, like it almost seemed like the Mexican officials were um, happy that they could save face. And I know I've made reference to that in like Japanese or Asian culture, but uh, there's a lot of pride in the Hispanic culture and the Mexican culture. And I think um, being able to save p face for them was probably really important. Anyway, it's really interesting to me, and I, I'm going to stop because I feel like I'm rambling now, that uh, what happens is basically Domun sees someone in a position like what he was in, and he, you know, wants Chico to kind of accept what has happened in his life, and at the same time, um, when he's given the opportunity, he could have just defeated him, and he even says something about, like, are you going to, you know, go back to... Mexico now or whatever and, and Chico kind of protests and he's like I don't want to and it's Regina and all this and then Domun kind of has a change of heart and um, it strikes me as interesting that perhaps uh, he saw how much the two of them were hurting and he saw a chance for him to free somebody from this fate that they're trapped in because uh, he's trapped in a fate if he wants to save his father you know he's also tied to his father maybe his father is the parallel to Gina, that if he can live through this year and fight and win um, and succeed in his mission, then he can free his father. And, uh, you know, that's after he finishes something. And Chico's trying to save his sister and free her from life on the colony where she'll, you know, suffer and die eventually um, by giving her the chance to live that life here and now, uh, awake as opposed to Domin's father who's asleep. So there's a lot of, like, mirroring and... Um, and all that stuff, which is, I think, pretty skillful writing. And, and I've always liked this episode overall. I mean, here's like the review part. I've always liked this episode overall. It's actually, when I knew I was watching it, I thought like, oh, great, this is one of my favorite episodes. Um, but uh, it actually, thinking about it, it's uh, it's pretty profound. It's like definitely, definitely handled. It, it's really interesting how, um, just how they handle all that different stuff. And uh, I'm really happy with it. So it's, it's pretty neat. So it was an episode I always liked, but it's a, uh, even better than I thought it was, and for, like, deeper reasons. I thought it was just cool before and kind of interesting, but now it's, like, it's kind of profound, which is uh, super fun. So I had to pause. I got interrupted by a phone call, so I don't even know what thought I was having right there, but, you know, sorry. I'm not finishing it. <laughs> um, let's see. I'm looking at my list of the little questions that I asked myself for the, you know, what to go through uh, just to kind of discuss the episode. Well, and uh, really, I don't think there's anything. I talked about what the what Chico Rodriguez was like. Um, I talked about his companion, because there's almost always a companion for the fighter, um, Gina. Uh, I talked about Domin and Rain. Um, well, except, like, Rain says something about, like, how men don't understand. Um, uh, she kind of is tired of, of Domun, um, which I kind of find interesting, because I thought they just went through this really intense, like, personal experience. Um, together up at the colony, uh, but I don't know. Maybe it's because of Domun, how he's like so emotionally calloused, and I think he's doing that a lot to protect himself. So there's a little bit more about him, and uh, like I mentioned, he says that Gina's not his problem, but then he helps Chico, even though he was callous towards him and wanted to send him back to the colony and stuff. I don't think he was doing it as like a, a 4D chess move to get um, Chico to want to live and, and, you know, coax him into agreeing to go with the fake out of the death and stuff. Um, so anyway, and then I talked about, uh, like the themes of acceptance basically. And, uh, there's really no lore stuff. I had just added this new section called Lost in Translation so I could mention that the dub renamed Tequila Gundam to Spike Gundam, but I mean, I already mentioned that earlier, uh, but I'll, do, I'll follow up with stuff like that. Anyway, so I've strayed a little from my format, but uh, I guess just one more thing I wanted to add in here, just because it's true. Uh, one of my favorite things was Chibity's involvement here. Um, I like how uh, like honorable he was and how he was disappointed in Domun when he thought he'd killed Chico like for no good reason. Um, and I liked him coming in and uh, like he wanted to interrupt the fight so that he could fight Domun instead because he wants that rematch, um, which is fun. Uh, but it's cool that he took down some of the... Uh, Neo-Mexico Gundams uh, so that they wouldn't interfere with the fight. I mean, it was because he wanted to fight Domun so that he could interfere with the fight, but he ended up letting them have their fight, which was pretty cool. I, I really liked that a lot. Um, and it was just a fun scene. And then seeing all the girls in Bunny in disguise and stuff in the beginning of the episode was a lot of fun. Um, 
So that's pretty much all I have to say. Uh, so anyway, great episode. Loved it um, on initial viewings and uh, seeing it again and thinking about it more. It was like a really, really solid episode. So that was pretty cool. Anyway, that's all for now. So remember, folks, go out there and grasp happiness. Oh, Thank you for yes. your time and attention. I'd love to do more of this. Like, share, and subscribe to cheer me on. Or give me feedback to make me stronger and smarter. Visit luminousbeings.blog for more. I link everything I do there, so if you want to comment, that's the place where I'll definitely see it.